Hey everyone, let's make a StarCraft 2 map. In the last episode, we implemented the accuracy and recoil system. This is going to make it more difficult to fire, but the more skillful players will be able to control their shots better than everyone else, and they'll have that advantage in-game. Now in this episode, we're going to implement one final feature into the basic attack, and this is going to complete the core gameplay mechanic which is the ability to move and the ability to attack. And that is the ammunition and reload system. This is something that I've actually implemented in a previous map in Warcraft 3. Before we go on, let's take a look at it. This was implemented in a series of maps called the S3 Marine Corps. It has a system similar to the one we're going to be implementing into our map, but I did things differently back then. We're just gonna focus on the reloading feature. Now, in the S3 Marine Corps, when your gun goes empty, you're not firing anymore. All that's gonna happen is you hear a clicking sound. This is to tell the players that they're out of ammo and they need to reload. The game doesn't do this for them, they have to initiate the reload manually. So what you do is you click on the weapon in your inventory, and then you wait a few seconds, and then any ammunition you have in your inventory will go into the gun and then you can continue firing. Because the reload is visually shown on the item through a cooldown, the player could switch weapons during the reload, so that was an inconvenience for a lot of players, but that was the game mechanic that I wanted. I actually had a lot of problems with some of the newer players in that they could never figure out how to reload, and I could never figure out why that was. Because the thing is, there's several places in the map that explains how to reload. There's the text in the tooltips of each weapon, there's the message at the start of the game, there's the help section where you press F12 and you can figure out how to reload there, and if you dry fire for a while, the game tells you how to reload. So there's several places where this information is given to the player, and for whatever reason, some players still could not figure out how to reload. And of course, they're going to ask other players and they'll explain it to them. Just click on the weapon. And they're like, okay. So at the very least, they can figure it out by asking other people. Though, they really shouldn't have to. But the really sad part is, even when people explain to them how to reload, they still can't figure it out. And that just boggles my mind. And I've seen people do a lot of really stupid things like they drop their weapon, they drop ammo, they, they pretty much drop all of their items, and they can never figure out how to shoot. Well, it's because you don't have a weapon. And it really confused me why people would do that. But times have changed. Now I have some sort of idea why that is. And I don't think it's because of their intelligence. I mean, they can turn on a computer, they can go on Battle.net, they can join a custom game, so obviously they know some knowledge. So the theory that I've come up with is that some people are just too impatient. They don't want to learn a lot of things. They just want to get into the game and have fun right from the start. But unfortunately, that's not how games work. You need to learn how to play the game before you can actually play it, and that takes time and effort. So let's go back to Deep Blue. How are we going to implement this ammo and reload system? Well, we're gonna have to take what we learned from the past and apply it to the present. When you reload in Deep Blue, there are a few things that are gonna happen. When you're firing your weapon and you run out of ammo, the game will initiate the reload for you. This eliminates the need to know how to reload right from the start. Even though it's going to be very simple to do, this is going to eliminate one of the things that a new player will need to know in order to play the game. Obviously, they're going to learn how to manually reload at some point, but to get into the game, you need to be as simple as possible. You'll also have the ability to switch weapons during the reload. This way, if for example an enemy finds you reloading, you can decide to switch to your pistol and attack him immediately, or you could just wait out the reload and attack him with your main weapon. So it gives players that choice. Finally, we're going to implement a penalty when it comes to reloading. 
If you initiate a reload, and you still have bullets in your gun, once the reload finishes, you lose those bullets. This means if you have 20 rounds in a 30 round magazine, and you reload, those 20 rounds are being thrown away. So that introduces another decision the player has to make. Do you want to play it safe, reload now, and be ready with a full magazine, and then throw away the bullets? Or do you stick with the ammunition you already have, and risk reloading or switching to a weaker weapon during a firefight? This is what the ammunition and reloading system is going to offer to this map. And once this is implemented, this is going to complete the core gameplay mechanic. And to go back to the previous episode, this game mechanic is going to be easy to learn and hard to master. It's going to be easy to learn because there's only two things you need to know how to do before you can play the game properly. You need to know how to move, which is easy, it's WASD. And you also need to know how to attack. You left click where you want to shoot. And that's all you need to do. You don't need to know how to reload because the game does it for you. And this allows newer players to be able to contribute to their team's success and have fun. At least for the first few minutes of the game. So when they do need to learn advanced concepts like being able to switch weapons, they'll be able to do that because they're comfortable with the game and they'll already be having fun with it. And of course it's going to be hard to master because of all the functionality we already have in the basic attack. And this functionality is where players will be able to build their skills on. The more skillful players will be able to fire controlled bursts at their enemy, and they'll be able to decide when they should be reloading, so they don't get caught off guard. So for the ammo and reload system, there's three things we're gonna do. First, we're going to make our basic attack take into consideration ammunition. So if your gun runs out of ammo, you will not be able to fire until you reload. We're gonna create the reloading trigger, which is the trigger that's going to run when you press the R button. We're also going to have the reload be initiated when the player lets go of the left mouse button. Of course, the reload is only going to start when the magazine is empty. So let's take a look at the entity relationship diagram again. It's the same thing as before, but there are some variables we haven't used yet. In the gun types, there's the max ammo and max magazine. The max ammo represents the capacity of the magazine. In our case, it's 30. The max magazines represent how many magazines the player can hold. Right now, it's set to 15. Now in the guns table, there's the current ammo and current magazines. Remember, the guns table is supposed to represent the guns themselves and the current state they're in. So you can probably guess, the current ammo is how much ammo you currently have in the magazine, and the current magazines are the number of magazines you have at the moment. Now let's take a look at the triggers. Let's go back to use current weapon. We're gonna add some functionality to it to make it take into account ammunition. So the very first thing we're gonna add is we're gonna make it check if the player is currently reloading. Because obviously if you're reloading, you can't fire. Pretty simple. Then we're gonna check ammo before creating the dummy unit. Because without ammo, you can't fire. And if you can't fire, there's no point in creating the dummy unit. This is to save memory, because we don't want to load things into memory that we don't need. We're also gonna check ammo inside of the loop. Because obviously, if you fire a bullet, you have one less bullet. So, inside this loop, after everything is done, we're going to decrement the ammo counter. So you can now understand why this check is inside the loop as well. It's because at some point, you're gonna run out of ammo while you're inside that loop. So you need to be able to stop firing. Okay, now that's done. Now we're gonna create the reload weapon trigger. This new trigger is going to run when the R button is pressed. So what does it do? One line of code. It's going to call a custom function called reload player weapon. So wait a minute, why a function? First, let's take a look at the function itself. This function is going to check if the hero can reload. This means it's going to check if the hero is already firing. Because if you're holding down the left mouse button and you press the R button, you don't want to reload, you want to fire. At least I would assume so. Okay, it's to prevent stupid bugs from forming, because I don't want to have to deal with it. 
it's also going to check the ammo counters, because if you have a full magazine, there's really no point in reloading. Finally, it's going to check if you actually have magazines to reload with, because if you don't have an extra magazine, obviously you can't reload. And that's everything it checks. If it passes the test, we're going to start the reload. We're going to set a global variable to tell the other triggers that the player is reloading. Again, this is to prevent the player from firing. Then it's going to start what I refer to as the reloading timer. And this is a countdown timer based on the gun's reload time. When that timer reaches zero, the reload is considered finished. And that's when you get fresh ammo in the magazine, and that's when it decrements the magazine count. It's also going to display the reload bar. It's similar to the accuracy bar you saw in the previous episode, but instead of accuracy, it's going to keep track of the reload time. Now the reason this is in a function is because of the next trigger we're working on. We're going back to our stop firing trigger. In the last episode, it was only one line of code, but we're going to add on to it. So after it sets a variable that tells the other triggers that the player lets go of the mouse button, it's going to check the ammo count. If the weapon is empty, then it's going to run the reload player weapon function. So this is why it's in a function. Instead of placing the code for reloading triggers in two separate places, I just put it in the function, and in those two places, I just call the function. This makes it easier to update the code if there is a bug there, or if I want to add new functionality. It makes things easier for me. Next, we're going to go to the map initialization, and we're going to create a new function for it. Initialize reload finish triggers. And what this does might surprise you. When the map loads, this is going to create a reload finish trigger for every player. And these triggers run when the timer expires for the respective player. And the reason we do this is because the game doesn't know which player the timer is supposed to affect. So for example, let's say player 1 is reloading. Once he finishes reloading, the timer expires and we run the trigger for player 1. This way, we can determine which player has finished their reload. As you can see here, the trigger's action is added by its name. You'll also notice that we add a number to the end of that name. The name and number together is the name of the function. That means we have a unique function for every single player. We also add the reload timer of each player to each individual trigger. So when player 1's timer expires, it's going to run the function for player 1. So what are these functions? Well, here comes something new. Instead of creating a new trigger or function in the trigger editor, we're going to create a custom script. And this is just a blank script we're creating. This is where we're going to create these new functions. And I'm going to name this reload trigger functions. As you can see, these are all the functions that are going to be run with those triggers we created. And the only thing these functions do is call another function, which is called reload finish. Although every single one of these functions calls the reload finish function, they all pass in a different argument. In this case, it's the player number. And this is exactly how we determine which player is being affected by the reload. So here's our reload finish function. Although it's not a trigger itself, for all intents and purposes, this runs when a player finishes reloading. First, it's going to set a global variable. It's the same one that we set when we started the reload. So now it's going to tell all the triggers that the player finished reloading. Next, it's going to decrement the magazine count. Self-explanatory. But here's something special. We're going to check if there's ammo in the gun during the reload. Why do we do this? It's simple. When you take out the magazine, there might still be a round chambered in the gun, so that bullet can still be fired. So, if there's ammunition still in the gun, we're going to put in a new magazine, plus add in that single bullet. That means for a 30 round magazine, you're going to end up with 31 bullets. It's one of those things that makes the game more realistic. Next, we're going to remove the reload bar because you've already finished reloading, so you don't need to see it anymore, so let's get rid of it. Finally, we update the ammo and magazine counter. This updates the HUD. It tells the player that they now have ammunition to fire, and it tells them their new magazine count. And that's it for the ammo and reload triggers. Now let's see what happens.
the attack behavior remains unchanged. Well, of course, we didn't change anything. The only thing we did was put in the ammo and reload system. At the bottom left of the screen, you'll see the ammo and magazine counter. This shows the player how much ammo they have left in their weapon, and the number of magazines they have. You'll notice this counter goes down with every shot the player takes. And when it reaches zero, the player can no longer fire, and when the player lets go of the left mouse button, the reload starts automatically. Notice the reload bar appearing in the middle of the screen. Once this bar fills up completely, the reload is finished and you can fire again. You can also initiate the reload yourself by pressing the R button, and you achieve the same result. Well, almost the same result. If you initiate the reload itself, that means you still have bullets to fire in that magazine. The bullets of course are thrown away, but there's still that one round chambered in the weapon. So instead of 30 shots you get from the reload, you're gonna get 31. But even with that extra round, the magazine itself doesn't last very long. You'll notice that if you discharge the entire weapon, the entire magazine is gone within a couple of seconds. You also have a limited number of magazines. This is going to discourage players from just spraying bullets everywhere. They have to pick their shots carefully and conserve ammunition whenever they can. And that is the ammo and reload system. And we didn't just finish this functionality in the basic attack. This is the entire core game mechanic, the ability to move, and the ability to attack. This game mechanic is now complete, but obviously, we still don't have a playable map. There's more to it than just moving and firing. We also need to consider the layout of the map, how the gameplay will flow from point A to point B. We have to consider the advantages and disadvantages of being at a position on the map at a particular time. So in the next episode of Deep Blue, we're gonna play around with the terrain editor. I'm gonna show you what it can do, and we're gonna use it to create the layout of the entire map. Remember, this map is going to be played AOS style, that is, it's going to be similar to Aeon of Strife. So with the terrain editor, I'm gonna be making the bases for each team, and the lanes between them. We're still a long way from being able to play this on Battle.net, so until then, look forward to it.